sleeper pales and rails. So the idea is to find the line of tension through the front of the hip. You are going to connect to your core. Begin to irradiate the strong core. Keep those lumbar spine vertebra as far close to the floor as possible. Post your pelvic tilt and then let your knees drop down to the side away from the target hip. At that point, you should start to feel a line of tension. Next step is to apply a bit of a stretch with the opposite foot on the knee. This is a little bit more intense, so make sure your core is strong against it. After a one to two minute passive stretch, we apply our pails. Pails again is where we really increase tissue quality. We can work on enduring strength in this position, trigger mechanical transduction. This is our internal force input. So at this end range, we're gonna reestablish our radiation, strong stability, core breathing, and then drive this right knee up into the left foot. It's an isometric, nothing moves. Try to find your greatest, safest effort. Ramp up past 50, 60, 70, maybe 80% of your maximum effort and hold for 10 seconds. Then hold on to your radiation and stability again. Rails is trying to pull that right knee away from the left foot. So drawing it down to the floor, trying to pull to the floor. You're gonna be using your adductor. If it cramps, this means that's neurological confusion. It is not used to this habit, this function. Always greatest, safest ever. So many options with this hip sleeper base position. Test them out, find the one that feels the safest for you, but also that targets that line of tension that you're craving. First thing to play with is how close are your feet together when you come down versus how far apart are they before you come down. Another thing to play with is, are you in a little bit more extension when you come down, or are you up in more flexion when you come down? If you want a little more stability for your back, you maybe don't trust your back, you can do this up on elbows. Even more so, you can go right up to your hands. One of my other favorites for this is to start out in a shin box and then come down to find that line of tension. Again, the other leg provides the resistance for your pails and rails. Progress by taking it out to a true 90-90 and then come back to find your line of tension. Again, the other leg provides the resistance for your pails and rails. And for the most amount of spice, 90-90, but intentionally bring your pelvis as much to face that trail leg so that the hip is in relative internal rotation. And then go see, can you come back down, maybe on the elbows, maybe all the way down to the ground. There's your line of tension, pails and rails. Take home message. If you have had chronic hypertonicity, tension, overuse of your hip flexors, there will be some repercussions for the quality of that tissue. It becomes more disorganized, it becomes less viscoelastic. Our pails and rails is how we change that. The pails in specific is what improves the tissue quality along with our end range strength. Be it in a half kneeling position or that Thomas test over at the edge of a bed or your hip sleeper. And there are other ones out there too, but find something to address the tissue quality and apply those pails and rails. And now that you have improved the quality of that overloaded tissue, the challenge is to find techniques to show your brain, your hip joint, your body, what you want to use and how you want to use it so that when you go to stand up, you don't go back to the same muscle pattern that got you in the situation in the first place. 